If you remember from the last video, we looked at the hint feature in a slide puzzle game I made in Flutter. When a hint button is pressed, an overlay would appear precisely on top of the piece that should move. This is implemented using a composite transform folder widget and layer links. It's not a complex topic, but it's certainly not the most well-known technique for Flutter beginners, so let's jump right in. As we have mentioned several times in previous videos, there are three main stages in the Flutter rendering pipeline, layout, paint, and composite. Usually, the positioning of widgets are determined during the layout stage. As the famous saying goes, constraints go down, sides go up, parent sets position. If you're not familiar with this topic, you should absolutely learn more about it either by watching my previous videos or read the docs. In this default counter project, a column here contains two text widgets. So during the layout phase, it would pass down constraints to each of the children, let them determine their own sizes and report back. Then the column would position its children in sequence, vertically from top to bottom. If I add a Flutter logo in between, it would then go into the middle. Of course, at the end of the layout phase, we still wouldn't know what these widgets would look like. We only know about their sizes and positions. So in the next step, Flutter will start to paint these widgets. Or more accurately, we would start to paint their corresponding render objects. For simplicity, you could imagine a series of individual pictures being created for each widget. Except these pictures are not pixels yet. They only contain painting instructions. And each picture is not necessarily going to have its own separate layer either. So yeah, not exactly what you imagined. But anyway, once the painting phase is done, these individual pictures will then be composited into a scene. If you were to do this yourself, you may need to call the add picture method in a scene builder. Again, for simplicity, you could imagine this phase sort of like putting a bunch of layers in a photo editing software to form a big picture. Say we want to move this text layer a little bit to the left, we could just drag and drop to move it. That is to say we're applying an offset to the layer as a whole. If somehow during the compositing phase, we could ask Flutter to do exactly that, we would easily be able to make one widget appear on top of another. That's where the composite transform follower and composite transform target widget pair comes in. As the name suggests, a composite transform follower would, during the compositing phase, apply a transformation to make the follower appear on top of its target. Let's try it here. Let's first wrap this Flutter logo with a composite transform follower widget. And you can see right away, it wants a layer link. So let's make one at the top. And then let's wrap this text widget with a compositing transform target widget and pass in the same layer link shared by the follower. Hot reload, and you can see the Flutter logo is now being moved to land precisely on top of its target text. Even though in the layout phase, we specifically used a column to make sure these three widgets would be positioned vertically one after another. Since the painted picture is transformed during the compositing phase, a hole from the layout phase is left behind. Let's try to wrap this floating action button with another compositing transform follower and with the same layer link again. Hot reload, and you can see it's transformed to the target as well. So clearly, multiple followers can follow the same target. The only caveat here is the target must be painted before any of its followers. Since the widget is called a follower, let's see how good it is at following. Let's first make this column scrollable by wrapping it with a single child scroll view, and we put a big placeholder at the bottom. Now you can see when I'm scrolling, the button follows its target perfectly, even when the target may not be visible anymore. Let's make this app bar darker so you can see better. So yeah, as you can see, even though the target text is not visible to us, the floating action button is still following it. This is because we used a single child scroll view here, so the children of the column are always rendered. If we change it to a more efficient list view and scroll it up again, we can see that the button goes back to its original position when the target is no longer being rendered. If you aren't familiar with the differences between a single child scroll view and a list view, please watch my previous video series on Flutter scrollables. Optionally, we can choose to hide the follower when the target is lost by setting show when unlinked to false. We can also pass in an offset to modify its position when being transformed. For example, we can pass in offset 0, 100 to shift it downwards a little. In practice, this layer link mechanism is often used in combination with overlays. For example, in a text field, the copy-paste toolbar and these text selection handles are able to land precisely on the actual text field thanks to layer links. And in the slide puzzle project I showed earlier, the overlay entry created from the hint feature is wrapped with a composite transform follower widget, and each of the puzzle pieces are composite transform targets with their layer links made accessible with an inherited widget. If you're interested, you can check out this project on my GitHub. Thanks for watching, see you next time.